Everybody, oh, is this working? Yeah, thank you for being here. So hardware and software in the metaverse, super interesting stuff. So uh, yeah, um, Christoph, as the presenter introduced him, um, he's the founder of, the, uh, of Vertex Stadium platform, creating um, virtual stadium experiences, which is pretty, pretty nice. Uh, Antonio is the CMO of uh, OWO, or OWO, or OWOW, oh, wow, I guess, <laughs> depending on how you pitch it. <laughs> so they uh, designed, produced, and patented a haptic suit or haptic like set of hardware systems. I would love to hear more about that. I'm already, like, my head is spinning right now with uh, virtual stadium experiences and haptic systems that that next generation uh, entertainment for eSports and, and whatnot. So uh, reminds me a little bit of the X1 haptic suit for Ready Player One, uh, for the ones of yeah. the U. <laughs> so it will be super interesting to hear uh, your guys' thoughts on uh, hardware and software for, for eSports experiences, but more in general, as I'm sure that you have like, a lot of thoughts of the industry in general. So. Um, so yeah, maybe as a, a little bit of an introduction, uh, Christopher, you can tell uh, the audience a little bit more about the Vertex Stadium platform. So just to context set a little bit. Yeah, yeah, happy to do that. So yeah, Vertex is a virtual esports stadium experience uh, accessible across platforms. But we started with the idea when we were involved in the virtual reality esports scene, actually uh, three, four years ago already. And uh, we were going to these events, and we were like, you know what? We are already using VR chat or like poker stars to, to hang out across continents with the community. And we we're like, there's nothing dedicated for esports, and there's nothing that really um, re or rethinks the entire experience. If you think about the platform where things are heading and what's possible with game engines these days, and the VR headsets, we were like, why is no one recreating gameplay um, in a virtual stadium so that we can watch it like we would watch football in the Bernabeu Stadium? So yeah, that's what we set out to do. Um, quite a bumpy road because uh, there's a lot of obstacles you have to overcome. It's different to Twitch, where you can just stream any game without asking for permission from the publisher at all. Uh, it's obviously fair to do that. What we are doing is actually we are partnering with the original esports publishers. So that's the Metas, Valves, Riots of the World that are developing the top competitive titles. And then we are saying, hey, guys, let us recreate your game inside our virtual stadium. And, and then we give that as a new audience channel to your leagues, teams, brands, the individual streamers. Anyone can host their own stadium. Um, and in the future, obviously, there will be some UGC elements to it where people can customize um, their environment. Um, and it will not stop at stadiums. But yeah, for us, VR is a big part of it. Uh, so we do believe in, in the full immersion and taking people out of the context where they are. So obviously, metaverse for some people or the hardware software relationship could mean, you know, a layer here. And that's valid. That, that's obviously one, one way to think about it. Um, we are just big fans of, you know, full send, full immersion. Uh, we actually want you to, if you enter one of our stadiums, we want you to get these goosebumps when you go into Bernabeu. So one of the big things we are investing into is also the, the audio side of it. Um, you know, how does a virtual stadium with two, three hundred, four hundred users feel? Um, can we recreate this bus, that energy of a real stadium? Um, and we can. The, the answer is yes. And uh, yeah, yeah, actually, um, OO can be helpful with that as well. Yeah, that's quite awesome. Yeah, yeah. thank you, Christoph. So just a little bit to uh, expand on that. Do you see that uh, your vision of Vertex in the future is that Vertex on similar platforms, hopefully Vertex first, um, uh, replaces experience for users, uh, so they so they don't have to go to 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 the soccer field or whatever sp yeah, sports they like. That that gets replaced completely with VR immersive experiences, whatever that means. 
Yeah, so it will definitely take over um, or cannibalize to some extent what people currently do on video. Like, if you take a big picture view of it, I believe it is the transition we've seen from radio to television. You know, people stopped listening to the radio because now you had a better experience and had more content and context if you watch television. <laughs> so if we think about the next 10, 20 years, we are going to see a transition from 2D experiences, video, so video and audio, to full 3D. And that, can, that will be driven by the new hardware interfaces uh, that we're obviously involved in. But um, so I think obviously going to the Bernabeu or Cam Nou or Langsess Arena, Katowice, and p meeting people in person, we won't ever fully replace that. And that's not the goal. Like that's still something super unique and exclusive, and that's not the, the goal, but we make this, this large-scale shared experience very, very accessible, and I think we just uh, grow the pie overall and provide, because if you think about it, the gap between going to the real thing and watching it at home on a 2D screen, you have the accessibility, it's super cheap, that's awesome, but like the, the experience you get, the gap is too big. That should not be the gap. So what we are trying to do right now is close that gap a little bit. But honestly, the next step then is do all the things that you can do in the real world. So for example, some of you might know uh, 2017 League World Finals in Beijing when the Dragon flew in. So that was quite a unique moment in esports, broadcasting or live entertainment in general because that was quite cool. You brought elements to the broadcast, but it was only visible on the broadcast. People in the stadium couldn't see it. So in a virtual stadium, we can do whatever we want, and we don't really have a lot of the budget limitations. So one of my favorite examples is actually, for example, Counter-Strike. We could blow up the stadium every time <laughs> and spawn, spawn users again. Obviously, uh, thinking of age and safety, we won't do that every time, but um, like anything is possible. That's awesome. Antonio, um, can you tell us a little bit more about um, this haptic uh, design yeah. that OWO has? Um, what kind of market it targets? Um, anything yeah, that comes to mind from that perspective? Yeah, awesome. Christoph was talking about the software, but as the hardware is also really important here because you need to immerse more into the experience. And we at OWO, we have developed and patented a haptic system, a cutting edge cut, uh, haptic system, because until now, almost all the systems were based on vibration, but we are based on uh, electrical pulse, and that permits us to make the infinite, infinite uh, different sensations. It's not the same as vibration that you have a, like a big mobile over your body, but here we can control nine different parameters where you can uh, change the wave, the length, the size, the impulse. So you can recreate almost everything. And how is that important for, for the metaverse? But I must say that it's not only for the metaverse. You can use also for entertainment, music, cinema, also military training, because we are working on that vertical. But for the metaverse, uh, until now, you just have the VR, so the sight. You have the hearing with the headphones, but now you have the feeling. You can touch the things. And that's the main difference for the future about the metaverse, that you can feel something. You know, there is an experiment just for also for, for noise, uh, for noise, sorry, for the smell. For the smell, sorry, mm -hmm. thank you. And, and more things. Even a kiss, we saw uh, a university in, in England that creates like a kiss simulator for the metaverse. But you can touch, you can feel now. And I will show you, sorry for the, for the ad, but also the thing is that this is real and you can use now. This is a real haptic vest. Till now, there were like really huge vests uh, but this is, we call this second skin, because as you see, it's flexible, it's washable, you can put in your washing machine and get it clean. And as I said, it's the way, the system to feel in the metaverse. We are also not working only on the best, we are working also on the sleeves, on trousers and more things. But this is the first thing that we will release at the end of the year. And 
like Christoph said, maybe you have the virtual stadium. How can you feel that you are in a real stadium? Okay, with the touch. The, with our system, you can feel the wind when you throw from a parachute, or you can feel a hug, you can feel a knife, and this is, saying this, you can think, okay, this is the marketing guy that is telling us, okay, this is too, too easy to say. No, no, but when you try it, the, it's incredible how it works. Uh, even the recoil for a gun is not the same, the effect for a gun that a for machine gun. So we can recreate all these sensations because we have the different sensors over the, the second skin that allows us to create that and integrate with the software with the developers. That's quite awesome, especially that you brought the best to show the audience. Mm -hmm. So you said that this will be available for mass consumption by end of year? End of the year, yeah. Awesome. So pre-ordering discount code, that South be, Summit 22? That would be great. That would be great. So well, yeah. <laughs> if you go to our <laughs> website, obogame.com, we, we get the pre-orders open. So, and we are, right now, we will release the development kits. We are working with a lot of uh, first parties and developers, and we are releasing the developing, development kits now. So, yeah, as you said, at the end of the year, it will be available for everyone. That's amazing. And this is real, everybody. Yeah, like, real. the guys just show the best to everybody. Yeah. So, uh, you didn't answer the discount codes out Summit 22 for the audience to get we a discount. discount no? because we, okay. didn't, we didn't set, we didn't set yet, yet the, the store, but we have the pre order site. So, if you want to get all the information, it's there. I will pre order and, like, right And right. also, I will say we are really happy at the company because. We receive at CES at Las Vegas the Innovation Award. We receive at Meta the Metaverse event at Monaco two weeks ago also the Innovation Award. So the people is the people when they tried they tried the best the second skin they think is real and it works really really good. Okay, thank you, Antonio. So l let's bridge a little bit of the gap that Christoph alluded to before. So obviously. Uh, having a very immersive experience that feels like real life is a super important thing. That's why companies like OWA are working on these haptic systems. So if you had to throw like a wild guesstimate on how long will it take for people to have, for example, an amazing experience that feels really well compared to real life uh, using haptic systems uh, and other potential technologies that will be uh, coming out. So what would you guys say? So let's go uh, Christoph first. Yeah, it's actually like it's possible to do that right now or like next year. It's just a question of accessibility and uh, budgets. So I think that the challenge at the moment is bringing the cost down for everyone. So um, one of my <laughs> favorite examples is that um, if you wanted a really good VR experience four or five years ago, that's around about when I started to look into the industry, you would have to spend probably around 3,000 euros for a decent VR experience. You'd need a, a good gaming PC, the headset, and they were ca cable tethered. You needed the sensors and everything. Now you get the same level, if not better, at uh, 300 dollars, 300 euros. So one tenth of the price, in, uh, and that price point was established a while ago. So actually the, the rate of improvement was much faster than four years. So it was probably two, three years, 10 times price coming down. And at the same time, the, the experience was getting better because tracking was getting better without the amount of sensors with less compute power, just a tiny battery in a standalone headset. So, uh, and then also the peripherals that add to the experience, they are coming down in price points. So I think, it is going to be mass, I mean, um, probably with everything, I'd say three, four years. Like if I just take the same rate of improvement we've seen from before, from 2018 to now, I believe three, four years from now, you can get this level of full send immersion uh, at the price point of um, a PlayStation right now, all, all included. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Antonio. Uh, I'm, I was working, I'm working on the gaming industry for almost 30 years, and I'm really surprised how it develops, how it, the technology advanced from 30 years ago to till now. So, okay, so he said, okay, 1,000 euros and so on. I think now it's real, you can do it. Of course, it's a matter of money. But I will say that, okay, we have 
a really good thing right now for these 1,000 to 2,000 euros, but I cannot imagine what we will get in two years or three years, because the progression, it was amazing. It was incredible how it, how it advanced from, from 30 years ago. We have like a small roadmap in, in the office, because it's funny because we said, okay, the Game Boy, the Wii, the PlayStation, the VR, PlayStation 5, Oculus, and this, the gaps between the different technologies is getting smaller and smaller all the time. For the first consoles just appears like seven years, every seven, eight years, but now you have new machines, new gadgets, new wearables in months. So, okay, I don't know, it's a, it's a matter of money, of course, but we can get something real now, but it will be more real in two years, three years, even, even less. That's quite amazing. And yeah. I guess that reaching economies of scale is top yes. of mind for you guys, because this needs to be affordable by, by individuals, as Christoph said before, mm -hmm. uh, buying a, an Oculus like three, four years ago was like a very uh, prohibitive thing for most people. But right, right now it's like 400 euros, perhaps. Yeah. And, uh, and I guess that the haptic suit um, uh, or vest, yeah. I don't know what, is vest or... This one is a vest, but it will be a sleeve, it could like be everything. anything. Yeah. That's awesome. And I guess that integrates with Oculus and, and yes. with all the other more kind of commonplace uh, headsets. Yes, That's it's compatible with all the platforms, so you can use even with mobile, even uh, with the consoles, with the PCs, VR. So that's the funny thing, is that you can use for everything. As I said, it's not only a question of the metaverse. It, you can use it for everything. And that's the good thing about this happy technology. I'm not talking only about our product, at our product. No, no, I'm talking about happy for everything, that's for awesome. the life. Yeah, and I guess that as CMO at, at OWO, you want uh, every single person on Earth to be <laughs> uh, wearing this vest in three, four years' time. But in reality, do you think yeah. that there will be like a, a, a problem, a, like frictional, um, to get mass adoption, it will take a while, and it will be mostly uh, geeks such as myself, uh, just to include me in that category, that will say, oh, I will wear this like tomorrow, but it will take substantially more time to reach, I don't know how, uh, there are like four billion uh, uh, mobile phone users in the world, so yes. what's your, your take on that? Okay, cross fingers, okay, <laughs> but uh, we can give our example. Right now, we just, uh, show the product on, on trade shows, on game fairs, and without doing anything, even really, really small marketing, we just get 7,000 pre-orders right now. And we want to reach uh, 40,000 to, uh, to the end of the year. So you can imagine the progression. Without doing anything, we have this, those 7K, 7K pre-orders, so who knows? Right now we are talking with all the first parties because, as you said, we need to get a right price for the mass market, and we don't want to have an expensive uh, product. Right now we are working on a um, sale price of $450-$500, uh, and it's something that we are working on just to, to as I said, to get the right price. Uh, you said maybe VR glasses, the best, and another thing for $1,000 is something that we can achieve. So about the numbers. We will see. We, we are confident with, our, with the quality of the product. So That's awesome. Maybe but, any thoughts? Yeah. yeah, adding is I, I think one of the things that we also see in the, in the hardware software kind of mm. synergy is that um, you know, it's, it's kind of a balancing act. You need hardware advances yeah. to then be able on the development side to push the boundaries. So for example, um, the headsets two, three years ago, uh, just in terms of what you would have available in terms of resolution and things like that. Um, we wouldn't have probably, like Vertex specifically, been able to go to some of the top publishers and be like, yeah, we want to recreate your game inside our stadium. It will look crap. Now it's going to look a lot better because the hardware has improved a lot, so we can offer a really good resolution and uh, be basically true to the game. Um, but then also new hardware like the vests, they allow us to then create new user experiences. Yeah. And that's when you then, the, the content and the hardware, that together as a package drives consumer demand. Um, I mean, yeah. 
how many in the room, or I mean, I for sure did that. I asked my parents back in the day, I want a PlayStation, because I want to play FIFA, right? Or I want to play uh, Battleground, or whatever. So it's, um, sometimes it's specific content that drives demand, sometimes it's uh, obviously hardware that inspires yeah. developers to then create awesome content, and I think we're, it's a self-accelerating circle here that we're already in, and Oculus and, and others, HTC as well, at least when it comes to VR and, and the new interfaces have really invested heavily into that to now, because honestly, we're at a point where the hardware is really good. Uh, we just now need to get a lot more great content uh, onto the platforms mm -hmm. and, uh, and make it worthwhile for consumers to go full send into, into the full, mm -hmm. fully immersive metaverse. I will add that, as you said, software is really important, and that's the reason we need to provide the right tools to developers. Uh, for example, in example, for us, we, we add just one month ago the uh, Sensations Creator to the SDK because it's the best way for developers to create in an easy way the sensations that they want, not only the prefix sensations that we offer, they can create. And that's, that's something that could develop more and more community and more and more uh, fondness on the, on the product. And not only for that, because at the end it's a matter of, of what the developers have in their mind. And if they can create because they have the right tools, they have the right software, they can do almost everything. It's quite fascinating, guys. So uh, very much looking forward to it. So uh, unfortunately, we are running out of time, but I would like to open this uh, for the audience to ask uh, one or two questions, depending on, on time. So any burning questions for, for Christoph and Antonio? Just, uh, there is a microphone somewhere, I think. Um, yeah, there we go. Everybody, okay. <laughs> so, last question on my side. Um, obviously, uh, a lot of people uh, don't think that they need this, that they need this very immersive experience in three or four years' time, even though you guys are working toward that uh, every single day, um, or dying in the attempt, so to speak. So, uh, Christoph, ca can you tell from your perspective, uh, how are you going, how, how's Virtex planning to prepare the yeah, world for this? Very, very good question. Uh, so actually, um, when we went out to the eSports scene initially um, and showed this to leagues and teams, they were like, yeah, cool, but our audience isn't in VR yet. Um, can you just give us content for the stream, virtual stadium on a stream? And it was actually during the pandemic. There weren't any local like, physical events. So they were mostly interested in using that as content for Twitch. So we're like, yeah, sure, that's actually easy. You just create camera tools, virtual camera tools that you have in any stadium. And um, so that's what we're giving them. So it's actually going to be quite easy. Twitch audience will see the uh, virtual stadium on stream. Uh, Twitch audiences can type in chat commands to, to the stadium can react like a Mexican wave or things like that. Or they can spawn their avatar if their Twitch account is already connected with us. So if you know how these audiences think, then naturally they are going to be like, fuck, I want to be in the stadium. Um, I can be in there. I can be seen on Twitch. Awesome. I'm going to hop in there with my avatar. I'm going to wave. So actually during tests, the app is already live and close better right now. We had uh, users actually realize, wait, my friends could be watching me right now. Um, OK, I'm going to go into the lobby and, and play and see if they see me. And they were waving at the, I mean, in the game, they don't see the virtual fans because it's disconnected. But uh, we have these dynamics. And I think, um, so we actively think about the content strategy for traditional platforms and how we can basically, through the uh, hosts of the stadium, target these audience so that we don't even have to do it because they just get exposed to the virtual, to the metaverse, so to say. Like, oh shit, I can be part of this? Right. I'm gonna try it out. That's yeah. awesome. Any closing thoughts? As we have just two seconds, I will say, <laughs> Sorry. just try it, because it's the way that you will feel that you want that. My, as my main problem as a marketeer right now with me, my product is that uh, I need that the people try it, because when they try it, they are really into the product. It is the only way that say, okay, I want that. I want to, to try metaverse with that. So anyway, that's awesome. Thank you. Well, thank you everybody for your time. Round of applause for these guys. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you.